I would like to welcome you all. Welcome you all to the second RPO training in the framework of the National Open Access Monitor Project for Ireland and paving the road to 100% open access. First of all, I, I would like to tell you that I, I, I tried to focus the second training to specific aspects regarding the the monitor and the RPO and the repository uh, monitors and dashboard respectively. I will go through uh, details during my presentation and uh, because uh, I think I believe that most of you have already attended the first RPO training in November and you have a general idea of uh, the project, how open air functions, the workflows and how we build the National Open Access Monitor for Ireland. Of course, any questions and any further queries you would like to ask regarding any of the process, feel free to ask, even not, or also even interact with me during the presentation. It would be better if it is an interactive session among all of us. So, this is the outline of my presentation. I will have an overview. We will talk a little bit about uh, the open air graph and data quality. Uh, and then we will go to the several to the aspects that I have already mentioned to regarding the monitor, the linking functionality, uh, the functionalities and the options that the primary dashboard managers of the RPOs have in the ICE monitor, the open orgs platform, and a few cases in regarding the duplication and the disambiguation of your organization, regarding the data sources, the repositories. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the open air guidelines, the compliance, the registration to open air provide, and how we cope with the existing, the registered repositories, but also the repositories that were not registered in open air and were not compliant with the open air guidelines. As a final aspect, we will uh, speak a little bit about the APCs and the data that we get from open APC garden institutions. And we will also talk about the next steps and how we'll call in the work in progress that we have until the delivery of the monitor by the end of June. So what you have already know, the monitor consists of five dashboards. It's a national dashboard. The dashboards for the research funding and the research performing organization, the dashboards for the institutional repositories and the researchers. And our focus on this training will be on the for the RPOs. That's the research, the RPO dashboard, the RPO and the repositories dashboards. So why an RPO should how, how why an RPO should have a, a dashboard and how to use it in order to uh, establish a national level visibility for his results. They can compare the open access performance against other peer institutions, ensure compliance with open access mandates and uncover weak spots and insights in order to guide evidence-based decisions inside their organizations. Of course, these are aspects as we can use. The pilot platform. Of course, we can all understand the, the visibility aspect of the dashboard. And regarding the compare the open access performance against peer institutions, you can do it. You can view indicators in the cross RPO topic. Well, you can compare by the number of peer reviewed publications, the number of open access peer reviewed publications, 
the golden hybrid open access, peer-reviewed publications, the ones with an ORCID ID, and several other comparison charts. As you will see in all the charts, the RPO that uh, exists, the RPO that whose dashboard we see right now we, is in the first column here. And this is for, in our case, the Trinity College. And of course, there are also Zoom capabilities for each chart in order to see the differences and the numbers. So in the RPO monitor, we have two views, the indicator view, as we have just seen, and the research output view. To the indicator view, you can guide through several topics from scholarly production of the RPO, where you can see the publications, the peer-reviewed publications, the open access peer-reviewed publications with license, followed up by the access rights, the open access routes, the fair aspects, APCs, the cross RPOs, which we have already seen, and the academic impact topic regarding citations and downloads. And of course, through the browse research products, where you can view in detail all the research products that are used in order to build the monitor. So, regarding the repository, dashboards and for mainly for the institutional repository managers. Why do, have, do you need to have a repository, a repository dashboard to ensure open access publication from the repository are accurately, accurately reflected and in order to facilitate the comprehensive coverage of the monitor of Ireland by having more data sources for the research product coming from the RPOs from Ireland. Now, if a repository is registered with Open Air Provide, first, they can elevate their records, the metadata, with precise validation and enrichment of their metadata. As in Open Air, we can provide them with richer metadata that we get for the same research products from other data sources via the Open Air Broker Service. I will go through in detail in the, in the, in the, in the next slides. Of course, they can gain insights from detailed user statistics through the repository, the downloads, and simplify open access compliance to promote effortless content dissemination. So this is a, a screenshot of the Open Air Provide platform. When, apart from the details regarding the aggregation and the record collection from the repository, the enrichments that have been made, the downloads, metrics and indicators from the repository. And for the repositories that are registered in Open Air, they have access to the Open Air Provide service, as you see right here, where they can register validate and then these uh, records. Of course, all this as a prerequisite is for the repository to be compatible with the open air guidelines. And all these usage counts, which are also visualized in the repository monitor here. In the National Open Access Monitor for Ireland platform. Where we can see the publications, the peer reviewed publications, and the open access with licensed peer reviewed publications that come from the repository. And with several breakdowns by fields of science, SDGs, and of course by access rights where we can see mainly in the access right topic, the open access versions of the publications that are released from the repository. So a few words regarding the open air graph and the data quality. This is the workflow, the graph, the open air graph 
pipeline where to where we aggregate through several data sources and also through open air provide from the repositories that are registered into open air and we perform various tasks tax enrichment by nine mining the duplication enrichment by inference and after finalization we have the final product and the iris monitor sits right here where we get a subset for the open air graph for the iris monitor and after the user feedback which is your feedback regarding the data quality we perform the same workflow in order to improve the quality. And another uh, schema here for with the architecture of the open air graph and where the Alice monitor stands. Of course, the open OX platform that needs to duplicate the organizations and of course, the open air provides platform with all the services of the validator, the guidelines that the data sources are need to be compliant with in order to register to open air provide. I will go through this slide quickly as it is, uh, it say, states that the, the sources that contributes to the graph, to the open air graph, and we have a very large number of data sources from Crosser, data side, la referencia, DOHA, and others. So, uh, additional tasks in order to uh, improve the data quality in Open Air Graph, we have the deduplication task workflow where Open Air Graph merges duplicate records of the same scholarly work, and it offers this duplicates through Open Air Explorer, the different versions. I mean, if we go to the browse research products, and we go to a specific publication, for example, at the top level here, we can see all the data sources that this publication has been collected from. The specific public application has only one data source and this is Crossref. And this publication, for example, has eight versions. And as you can see, we did perform the deduplication, but we also keep all the versions of the publication from the respective data sources from universities, institutional repository, from archive, data site, European Union Open Data Portal, Sigma, Paywall, and Europe PubMed Central. We have performed enrichment through text and data mining, where we perform affiliation, citation, and concept extraction with document classification regarding the field of science and SDGs and similarity assessment. Cleaning processes with independent continuous aggregations, where we utilize vocabularies to harmonize the diverse data source records, and thus we ensure consistent and accurate bibliographic records. And of course, we have additional disambiguation that we perform for journals, publishers, and licenses. As we receive also these with different names from different data sources. Additional now, additional data quality enhancements for the RPOs and the repositories. For all of them, it's the linking functionality that we offer through 
the Alice monitor. We will talk a little bit about this in the next slides. The disambiguation via the OpenOrgs platform. And of course, the registration of the repositories to OpenAir provide and their compliance with the OpenAir guidelines. So linking functionality. You can log in to the Iris Monitor via your institutional account. Once you log in, you can access the linking functionality from the top right. corner of the platform by selecting the initials, the initials of your name and the link option where you can associate research, any research output with projects, communities, or other outputs. This association, these links will show up in the next open air, open air graph update. Here I would like to mention that uh, the open air graph uh, workflow updates every month. So any change that we make concerning the content and the data itself will be depicted in the open air graph and of course in all the services. In the next update, which will be in one to two months, it depends on the date that we perform the updates, the changes. And of course, a log for all these linking actions is always will be always publicly visible in the platform. And this is in the resources and help, web statistics and activity logs. in the monitor logs tab where you can view all the actions that users perform in the monitor platform. And this is from Of course, all this data is anonymized. And this, uh, these logs have all the actions that we offer through the Ice Monitor platform, from the claiming of a work from an ORCID ID, or the upload DOIs functionality, where a user can upload the text at the CSV file of uh, containing uh, DOIs and uh, the Iris Monitor platform performs a check, a check to see which of these DOIs are present in the Iris Monitor. And of course, we, are, we have been developing a new functionality, which will be available in a few months, where also primary dashboard managers will be able to upload a set of DOIs, persistent identifiers, mainly DOIs from research products that they want to be affiliated with their RPO. If these DOIs, for example, are not affiliated yet in the Iris Monitor, because if we don't have any affiliation for these DOIs, a primary dashboard manager can give us these DOIs and we perform this affiliation is RPO. These are two screenshots from the linking functionality. First one where we select the research products, the research outputs, and the second one where we select the projects and the confirmation of the linking. So the duplication via OpenOrgs. OpenOrgs is a platform developed by OpenAir in order to perform this ambiguation of the organizations because we receive the same organization with different names from the variety with a different with a variety of names according to the data source that we collect information from from and the open is a platform where 
we deduplicate this information and we assign all these different names to one entity. And thus, this information passes as a duplicated information in the OpenAI graph in order to have one name for the RPO. In the end of April, we are going to have a dedicated OpenOrgs training webinar, the first one from the three that we will uh, give for the Iris Monitor project, where you will see in details the platform and how to perform the disambiguation of your RPO. So in OpenOrgs, uh, there is a specified specific process on becoming a curator. First of all, you will need to register for an open air account. And at the first login in the OpenOx platform, by using this open air account that we have created, you will request to become a curator. And then OpenOx team will process your request and you will be able to curate the information for your, your, for your organization. Currently, we are in the process of uh, contacting all the primary dashboard managers of the RPOs that have already been registered to the Iris uh, Monitor platform in order to perform this process. We will be sending the emails in the next days. So one important, one question that uh, has been asked by many RPOs and we've also uh, saw it also in the survey from the island that uh, you, uh, the Irish project has conducted in November uh, is that uh, there are several organizations, several RPOs that are not displayed in the National Open Access Monitor. What happens with these organizations, these RPOs, and what should I do if my RPO is not displayed there? When you don't, you can see your RPO. This means that your organization has not been incorporated into Open Air, and thus into OpenOx platform. The process to fix this and to add the organization, first of all, is to contact us in order to identify the issue. The second step is uh, every organization, in order to be incorporated you know, into Open Air, uh, needs to have an organization ID. The most common ID and the most that is used Globally, is the ROR ID, and this organization should request a ROR ID in order to for OpenAir to be able to incorporate it into the infrastructure. So once you request a ROR ID and you receive it, you can inform us, and then we will perform all the requested workflows, and we will process your organization. In uh, next steps is to process all the RPOs that have filled the survey, the National Open Access Monitor Ireland survey, and do not have a ROR ID, and we will inform them about the specific process. This is just a simple screenshot. I'm not going through details on the Open Ox disambiguation because you will have a dedicated webinars for the platform. I would like just to mention that uh, for the initial phase of the monitor, we have performed uh, a deduplication of the main, the biggest RPOs from Ireland. We performed the duplication ourselves. And for example, this screenshot is from the National University of Ireland, Maynooth, from the Maynooth University, where the deduplication has been, the initial deduplication has already been performed. Of course, apart from the the duplication, there is also the disambiguation of the parent and child relationships, where you can have schools and departments for each RPO. This will also be covered in the OpenOx webinars. So, regarding the primary dashboard managers, what extra things do, what I can do more as a primary dashboard manager in the Iris Monitor? This is my question. So 
A primary dashboard manager, first of all, it has access to the sandbox environment of the Iris monitor, where they can verify data quality and check any new or updated metrics and indicators, because whenever we perform any updates on the data, on the content, or we have new metrics and indicators, these first pass from the sandbox environment, and once verified, they will go to the production environment. Second, they have access to the OpenOrgs platform, as we have already discussed. And of course, they also have the, the ability to add, to invite, and to delete other users as managers. How to access my admin account as a primary dashboard manager? After you sign in, you can select your initials at the top right corner, and then select Manage Profiles. Let me show you how to do it. Once you sign in and you select the Manage profile options, you will, uh, you will be shown all the profiles that you are assigned the role of manager or primary dashboard manager. And by clicking it, you can view the admin account. What actions can you perform in the admin account? First of all, you can change the details for your RPO. You can change the display name, the locale, if you want it to be in English or Europe locale, the name, as we have already said, you can add a description and also a logo for your RPO. And of course, you can also invite other users as managers. So let's go to the repositories part section and the Open Air Provide platform and the compatibility with the Open Air guidelines. First of all, the Open Air Provide is a one-stop shop web service for data sources, institutional and thematic repositories, data repositories, general aggregators, and other entry systems who can interact with Open Air by sharing and exchanging metadata and content. And of course, they also have, through Open Air Provide, they also have front end access to many of Open Air's back end services. I will go through quickly to the functionalities in the Open Air Provide platform. First, you can use the validator service in order to validate the metadata records against the Open Air guidelines to measure the compatibility with the Open Air guidelines. You can register your repository in order to be aggregated by OpenAid. You can see details regarding the aggregation history, how many records were collected, how many were transformed. You can have enrichment of your metadata records, improving them, and you can use the OpenAid broker service to download these enrichments and use it to also to, for your repository. You can enable the user account service in order to have global metrics and a comprehensive view of the downloads of your repository. And of course, you can get notifications alerts regarding the arrangements, errors, or other any useful information regarding your repository. So compatibility with the open air guidelines, especially with the latest version of the open air guidelines, the version three and version four. You have improved interoperability since you meet the latest IT and repository standards. Because when you are compatible with the Open Air Guidelines, you have a more contextualized content, a more flexible content. Thus, you can use different and improved vocabularies. And of course, your content is embedded in the research and infrastructure ecosystem as it is aligned with the open science mandate and standards, and it will be, and it supports, it will support well-established metadata schemas and namespace abbreviation as the 
to open a guidelines follow well established schemas and abbreviations of course it is your role to fairness because if you are compliant with the open air guidelines then you are also fair enough as the open air guidelines cover most if not all aspects of the fair principles and of course it is your entity it is your gateway to european open science cloud as thus if you are compliant with the open air guidelines and you are aggregated by open air then you will be automatically onboarding to the EOS product catalog and marketplace integrated platform. And this is a link regarding the details on the upgrade, the compatibility of your repository with the open air guidelines to the latest versions, where there is also information about registration into open air provider. So what are the key points to follow in order to comply with the open air guidelines? First of all, you should expose your repository metadata via an OAI PMH endpoint, as stated in the profile of the Open Air Guidelines web page. You can follow the instructions to populate all the fields. You should at least populate all the mandatory fields in order to be compatible. And or the mandatory if applicable fields. And of course, the more fields you populate, the more better will be the data quality and the more better will be the results in your RPO dashboard. So in the question, of how do I expose the metadata of my repository? There is a, for, for, its, for version three and version four, there is a publication, respective publication. In Zenodo for version four is this one where you can see, apart from the, the documentation that exists also on the website, you can also see record samples and the metadata, the XSD schemas of the metadata that you need to form for your metadata records. So regarding the validation and the registration, the validator service assess the metadata quality. Basically, you run a test to check the compatibility against the open air guidelines, you get a score, a compatibility score, a per in a percentage on how much compatible you are. But this metrics serves as an indication only and does not confirm full compatibility. Also, you get a detailed report on the number of records that are passed for each guideline and an indicated number of failed records from your endpoint with warnings and errors in order to see what is the problem. So, the registration process in Open Air Provide. You can follow the link in detail to see how to register. After you perform the registration, the aggregation team will evaluate the compatibility with the open air guidelines. That's why I told you that the metric from the validator is not, it's just an indicated metric because we also evaluate the compatibility after your registration. And uh, you can see it in the open air provide platform in the three metrics that we have in its interface. We have the desired compatibility level, which is the compatibility, the version of the guidelines that you have selected for your repository. The compatibility level is the one, the current compatibility level is the one that has been retained by the validator tool after you have registered the interface. And the compatibility override field is the actual compatibility level, which is the one that is populated by the aggregation team. So, Regarding the Iris Monitor, currently we have 13 institutional repositories registered with Open Air. Three of them are compatible with the Open Air Guidelines version 3, and 10 are compatible with the Open Air Guidelines basic version and version 2. And we also had eight institutional repositories that were not registered with Open Air. For the repositories that were not registered with Open Air, we initiated ourselves the registration process and harvested the metadata records and we have adjusted 
the transformation rules, internal transformation rules that we have for each repository in order to transform, to custom, transform the metadata records, thus ensuring the alignment with the open air guidelines as much as possibly we could. The primary focus of this effort was on crucial fields, crucial fields for the harvesting process, and where applicable, of course, the identification of publications. The crucial fields we tried to map were the position identifiers, title, author, publication date, resource type, of course, and access rights information. We, one of our next step is also to contact the RPOs that we have performed these actions to the institutional repository and see how we'll walk through the next steps on maybe complying with the open air guidelines as we need to have more improved information for the RPO and the repository. So our work in progress is, as I already said, to check and refine all the repositories, the IRIS from Ireland, their compliance with the open air guidelines and their aggregation in order to improve the data quality. And as I already said, for the non-compliant repositories, we are facing difficulties in identifying the correct fields to map to the open air guidelines. For example, we have the DC for a, from a repository a specific repository that was not registered in OpenAI. We had the, the, DC, uh, the DC Dublin correlation field, which in that repository is used to serve the pages and identify of the metadata record of the specific, the specific metadata record, while in the guidelines, this field is used to identify the pages and identifier of any related research product and not the product itself. Oh, also a few words, quick words regarding the APCs. As you will see in the APCs topic in the RPO monitor, we have three subtopics. We have the APCs reported to open APC by any co authors institution. We have the APCs versus transformative agreements, and we have the APCs reported by the institution itself in Open APC. So, what are the differences between those these two? The first one are the APCs that are reported to Open APC by any co-authored institution. This does not mean that the specific institution, the specific RPO, actually paid the fees for these APCs. But the second bullet, the APCs that were reported, has been, have been reported by the specific RPO in Open APC, identify the publications that their APCs were actually paid by the institution. And one thing that we have uh, identified in several RPOs with Ireland is that they don't have, they haven't given their APC from APC information to open APC yet. And uh, additionally, there will also be a webinar, a training webinar for APCs from open APC in April or May. It is to be scheduled and you will all receive an invite once we have the date. So, oh, the next steps. First of all, this is the link that for the, in the first bullet, you can see the link of our help desk, where it is the place where you can use the link you can use to contact us or regarding any issue you might have with the platform, with the monitor. So, therefore, for the primary dashboard managers, they can register and request to be a primary dashboard manager of their RPO via the dashboard manager application form or via the help desk URL above. 
as I have already told you, there is there are going to be uh, training webinars for the OpenOx platform and the APCs. You will receive invites once we have the date con the dates confirmed. And of course, we need to work to have work in progress regarding the institutional repositories, following the OpenAir guidelines and registering registering with the OpenAir provider. And of course. For the latter, our main goal is to upgrade the compatibility of all repositories to at least version 3 or version 4 of the OpenAI guidelines. And this could also happen by aligning with the National Open Access Repositories Initiative, led by the University of Galway, and which it developed parallel with the monitor. We are in contact with them and, of course, with you. Thank you very much for your time.